I realize videos like this are really popular right now, so I figured I might as well toss up my two cents in the bucket while the iron is hot, or however the saying goes. We're talking about Metrolink, Southern California's regional rail system that's overcoming an identity crisis as a commuter rail. I mean, why else would they call it the Southern California Regional Rail Authority? I first started riding Metrolink in high school, mostly by organizing weekend beach trips with my friends, where we would go shopping and hang out in Oceanside and Carlsbad, and it was a lot of fun. I currently don't own a car, and I live in Southern California, which leaves a lot to be desired from the system. So let's get into it. If that frickin' helicopter outside can stop ruining my narration audio... Alright, let's just start from the top of the system map and work our way down. Firstly, the Antelope Valley Line. Honestly, I think this route is basically perfect. I mean, where else in the world can you take a commuter train to another continent? Besides Istanbul. The views are amazing and we love it. The only thing I would change is make the schedule so all the trains go the full length to Lancaster, instead of some stopping in Santa Clarita. That way I would never feel incentivized to do anything like this ever again. And by the way, going forward, I'm not going to say this for every route, but we need at least 15 minute frequencies 24-7 for every route. Moving on to the route that I actually know the least about, the Ventura County Line. I think it doesn't have to go all the way to Ventura, since Amtrak already serves it. I think after Oxnard it should curve around and serve Cal State Channel Islands, because it seems a bit lonely out there. Now onto the San Bernardino Line the pride and joy of the Metrolink system. Because you'll notice that unlike most of the routes, this one actually has relatively decent frequencies. At no coincidence, it's one of the two routes that Metrolink actually owns the rights of ways for. M helicopter. The biggest problem with this route is the bottleneck of the single track 10 freeway median segment, which would be an issue when increasing capacities and if Brightline West ever wants to use the right-of-way to reach Los Angeles from Rancho Cucamonga. The best option I see here is to convert the El Monte busway to rail. That way there will be plenty of tracks to go around. Now, as for El Monte, the city that has a station called El Monte Station that isn't the train station, talks have floated about moving the Metrolink station here. I think this would be shortchanging the residents of the new transit-oriented developments near the original station as well as removing a useful connection with the El Monte trolley. I propose to combine the stations with a single extended platform, like they did when the Arctic station was built in Anaheim. This way it would also be prepared for when Metrolink starts running 50 car consists in the future. Additionally, I believe it should be renamed the Scatman John Memorial Transit Center in honor of El Monte's most prominent resident. Moving further east, there is a noted lack of station in San Dimas, I believe the city, which has been avidly opposed to transit over the years, can be won over with a proposal that can capture the essence and cultural significance of the city. Which is why I propose to build Bill and Ted's excellent Transit Adventure Center right here on the 57 freeway, strategically located next to arguably the biggest driver of ridership in the city, Vitamin City Health Foods. Aside from that, the San Bernardino line is pretty solid. I have nothing else to say to it. While we're up here, Let's talk about the Aero Service, which is Metrolink's new light rail line between San Bernardino and Redlands. The obvious improvement here is to extend the route east to Big Bear, which is only possible because it's a light rail, where traditional heavy rail equipment would not be able to make it up the side of a mountain like this. The first time I rode Aero, I was extremely disappointed with the bicycle storage situation. They made it way too easy for cyclists to hang their bike from the ceiling. I recommend moving the bike storage racks to the roof because we'll need all the extra storage space we can get for passengers heading to Big Bear to store their water personal craft. Okay, up next, the black sheep of the flock, the Riverside Line. I touched on this one briefly in my Lake Paris camping video, but I've got some more to add here. Firstly, it must be noted that this is the only Metrolink route that does not have weekend service. This might have something to do with the tracks being owned by Union Pacific, so Metrolink is going to need to have a lot more lemonade stands to be able to afford to buy out this section of UP's Transcon line. Once that is out of the way, we can get some real progress. First, I definitely agree with adding a station here at Cal State Whittier Narrows. A Punta Hill station is a no-brainer, though the traditionally planned spot on Azusa might not be very future-proof due to the uncertain fate of Punta Hill's mall which is likely to be redeveloped into a drive-in movie theater. 
My vote is to put the station a little more east at Puente Hills Plaza, which would give immediate rail access to the Frank and Son Collectible Show, Garden Fresh Farmer's Market, the Shabaram Skyline Trail, as well as K1 Speed. Industry Station is fine where it is, but we'll touch more on that later. Yes, bus fans, that is a Proterra factory. Over here by Cal Poly Pomona, we should definitely utilize this recently abandoned segment of the Alhambra subdivision to make a West Pomona slash Cal Poly station. This will also come in handy later for a new DMU service between Ontario Airport and El Mani via the Alhambra sub. Speaking of Ontario Airport, there was recently a huge outcry to reroute the Riverside line to service the terminals here, but this could be accomplished a lot easier by adding an infill station on the south of the airport and simply moving the terminals to the south side. Once we reach Riverside, the line should extend to Palm Springs and terminate at the top of Mount San Jacinto. This way we can replace that archaic Palm Springs aerial tramway with state-of-the-art Bombardier coaches. At the end of the day, this will greatly reduce commute times from the top of Mount San Yac to LA. Which, by the way, did you know that Mount San Jacinto is named after a 12-year-old kid who died in prison because he refused to eat meat? While we're over here, let's talk about Amtrak's planned route to the Coachella Valley. I don't think this will be necessary because it would cause too much overlap, and this could be accomplished with a new Metrolink route connecting Bombay Beach to Victorville via San Bernardino Depot, which would only require minor infrastructure changes of a new connector at this junction right here. Introducing the Desert Line. Oh crap, that name has been taken already. Introducing the High Desert Low Desert Line, which can later be extended to Calexico as demand sees it probably when the Tijuana border reaches capacity. Moving on down to Orange County, let's look at the three lines that overlap each other in one way or another. Right out the gate we need to address Norwalk Station, since if we're going to commit ourselves to level boarding, which we should, we can't have any platforms along curved segments of track. I suggest this realignment, which would also be more conducive for the Metro C line extension so they could share the same platform. Given inevitable increases in ridership, Fullerton Station will need a third elevator, but the current pedestrian bridge is probably not big enough to support another one, so we'll just relocate the one from downtown Pomona, since they're not using it anyways. Actually, now that I think of it, the station that really needs it is Anaheim Canyon, since their recent addition of a second platform didn't include one, and they really expect people to walk all the way down to the grade crossing? If you look at the math, this doesn't make any sense. For Anaheim Canyon to have two platforms and no pedestrian crossing, while well, Placentia over there has zero platforms and one pedestrian crossing. It's outrageous. The city of Yorba Linda famously nimbied their potential station back in 2002, leaving it the biggest service gap with no stations through a populated area. I think we could sneak a station in here behind Cinema City where there's conveniently already a parking structure, and since we're technically behind the city limits of Anaheim, any opposition will be averted. However, once Yorba Linda is crippled by traffic from the forthcoming Gypsum Canyon Mega Cemetery project, I think they will concede to adding an additional station near Bryant Ranch, with an accompanying people mover to the cemetery, plus transit-accessible ice skating. The 91 Paris Valley line should deviate to Lake Paris after Moreno Valley. It was proposed that this line would extend either to Temecula or Hemet. I think it should do both, at least until the high-speed rail can take over the Temecula portion. The Hemet variant will terminate in Gilman Hot Springs to the benefit of employees and residents of the Church of Scientology's global headquarters. Now from Temecula, it's tempting to want to extend along the original right-of-way to Oceanside via Fallbrook, but I think this would better be served as an extension of the Escondido Sprinter, which will take a different route to serve a few more communities. Back in Orange County, we have to deal with the constantly eroding cliff sides compromising the tracks in San Clemente. I think tunneling the tracks inland would be too expensive and far too inconvenient for passengers going to the beach. This is why I suggest we extend the coastline Dubai style, that way the tracks can be realigned away from the cliffs without sacrificing access to the beach. San Onofre is going to need a station for when the former nuclear power plant gets converted into affordable housing. And lastly, once the US military is deemed obsolete, the area that is now occupied by Camp Pendleton will be returned to the public necessitating a station to serve the new Steward Mesa Wilderness Preserve. That pretty much covers it for the existing service area. Now let's look at some brand new routes to address some of those underserved communities. I don't know why I've never heard anyone suggest this one, but a 405 freeway median route seems like a no-brainer, 
because it seems that's the freeway that people complain about the most besides the 91. The right-of-way is already well future-proofed, because once cars start becoming obsolete, there will be plenty of room to quintuple track this route in both directions, giving room for multiple express and local variants. Starting from Van Nuys Station, we'll make it over to the freeway, where we'll follow it all the way to Costa Mesa. Exiting the freeway around Harbor, we'll probably have to do some street running on College Avenue, tunnel through this existing apartment complex, where we'll terminate the route right on Orange Coast College's campus. The next route I want to look at is the LAX Express Line. People have proposed to run this one from Union Station underground to LAX, but I think it is kind of redundant and really plays favoritism to LA County residents, who can already take the convenience of the A-Line to the E-Line to the K-Line to get to LAX. I think what we should really do, and this is really not a Metrolink thing, is to extend the Disneyland monorail to LAX. Next up is a route that's really near and dear to me because I made an entire video why we need it, which is the San Gabriel Valley to Orange County line. From Fullerton, we'll head up this abandoned Union Pacific right-of-way, up through Brea Canyon, we might have to run on the median of the 57 if we have to, then just before the interchange with the 60, we'll bridge off, stop at Industry, continue north parallel along Brea Canyon Road, head up Snow Creek through Walnut, then add a stop at the new Mount San Antonio College Transit Center. From there, we'll tunnel through the San Jose Hills, bridging over the 10 freeway, terracing along the hillside to the next stop, which is a seasonal station at Raging Waters slash Bonelli Regional Park, and then follow the 57 down to terminate at Bill and Ted's Excellent Transit Adventure Center to make sure we're covering all the route connections we possibly can. And don't worry, because the rest of the San Gabriel Valley will be serviced by a new OC streetcar extension. South from Fullerton, we'll share the existing routes through Santa Ana, where we'll revitalize the old Newport and Santa Ana Railroad right-of-way along Newport Boulevard, down to the terminus at Balboa Peninsula. And now that I think of it, that 405 line should extend a little bit further to a transfer station at the OC Fairgrounds, which can function as a gigantic park and ride for 10 months out of the year. This next route will cover the most underserved communities by Metrolink, starting from Canyon Lake, We'll run directly to Avalon via Laguna Beach, with also a transfer at Mission Viejo. It'll probably be too expensive to tunnel through the Santa Ana Mountains, so we'll just run in the median of Ortega Highway. And the bridge to Catalina should be no problem because just look at what they did with the Florida Keys. I can't imagine anything here would be different with the conditions that would cause this to be really, really difficult. And actually, since Canyon Lake is somewhat close to Paris, we'll extend the terminus to downtown. Though we might have to drain the lake to use the original right of way, or maybe bridge over it roller coaster tycoon style. Lastly, once LA Union Station is upgraded for through running, all Metrolink lines will terminate at the LA Wholesale Produce Market. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and thanks for all the support. I'd love to give a shout out to all my subscribers, and a big special thanks to my supporters on Patreon, including Jeff Bezos, George Lucas, Taylor Swift, Drake, John Wayne, Little Wayne, Little John, Henry Huntington, Richard Nixon, and Occult Kafra L. Thanks a lot, guys.